Hey y'all y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carrie. This is where I talk about knitting, my tips, my tricks, my opinions, and my preferences. And I say it all the time. You are the boss of your knitting. You get to make your knitting experience whatever it is you want, but you also get to make decisions about knitting projects no matter what the pattern tells you. However, there are some essential skills in order to truly be a knitting boss. I mean, obviously you gotta know how to knit, purl, do a couple different types of increases or decreases, no more than one cast on, no more than one cast off, be comfortable with blocking techniques, and yarn substitution. What's that you say? Yes. In order to be a true knitting boss, you need to be able to know how to look at a pattern, see the recommended yarn, and know how to make a different choice. So if you want to be the boss of your knitting, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, and let's talk about yarn substitution. Learning how to substitute yarn successfully is so liberating as a knitter because not only do you open up more possibilities of fibers that you can work with outside of what the pattern is might be pushing you towards or you feel like it's pushing you towards, it's also a chance for you to make a creative decision about the pattern. You're making a design decision. You are becoming part of the creative process and you're able to make that pattern your own. Now, if the goal, if your goal is to simply recreate, replicate the pattern as it's pictured, well, you might be leery of yarn substitution. You might be going, I don't want to be that creative. But still, sometimes a yarn simply isn't available to you. Like, it's literally not available on the market anymore. And that doesn't mean you can't still make that project and still have a beautiful item for you to enjoy and other people to ooh and ah over. But we're going to cover the basics today. This is going to be a primer to get you started thinking about how to approach yarn substitution. What are the basic factors that you need to look at when making that decision? And what areas you might need to do more research and learn more about in order to become a boss at yarn substitution. This is something we'll talk about more as we go along, but I want you to be aware when you start a yarn substitution, your motivation really matters, and so you really should understand it as you go into the process. Because the thing is, if you're substituting a yarn for budgetary reasons or because that yarn has been discontinued, most likely you are going to want to pick out a yarn that most closely matches the original recommendation. What's going to guide your decisions then are going to be somewhat different than someone who wants to make a yarn substitution because the recommended yarn is acrylic and they just want to work with natural fibers. And so you really should understand it as you go into the process. It'll help you make a more satisfying decision at the end. And as you finish the process, you may discover that why you want to make a yarn substitution and the needs of the project don't match up or they kind of match up, but you're gonna to have to make some compromises along the way. And if you understand your motivation behind doing a yarn substitution, you'll understand what areas you wanna compromise on, what areas you don't wanna compromise on, and maybe even discovering that the project ultimately doesn't suit your needs at all. So there's various factors that you need to consider when you're looking at substituting one yarn for another. And the place that I usually start is with weight and gauge. Designers choose a tension and a gauge to suit the kind of fabric that they want to create for their design. Sometimes a knitter wants a very flowy, loose, open design and so they knit at a looser tension using bigger needles. Sometimes a designer for their projects wants a stiffer 
fabric. And so they knit at a tighter tension using smaller needles. But in order to A, get the same gauge so that you're able to follow the directions and have your sizing work out properly, but B, create the same type of fabric that is represented in the project, a drapey one, a tight one, whatever it is. In order to do that, it the easiest way to do that with yarn substitution is to choose a yarn that's the same weight and that will achieve the same gauge as the original yarn. All a weight of yarn is, is discussing how thick or thin the yarn is. So worsted weight, lace weight, medium weight, number four. You hear these different terms thrown around. All they're describing is how thick or thin the yarn is. So in order to try to break this down and make it a little more understandable, let's look at an actual pattern and an actual yarn substitution situation. So here I have this pattern that I just, it's a free pattern from Lion Brand. I just pulled it off their website, hashtag not sponsored. It's just an easy resource to get a pattern. And the yarn that's recommended for this pattern, which is a cardigan, is Vanna's Choice Yarn. Sadly, Vanna's Choice Yarn has been discontinued. <laughs> But I still really like the cardigan. I can still make this pattern. I just have to find another yarn that's going to suit this project. And the place to start is with what is the weight of Vanna's Choice yarn? Um, and the thing is, the pattern doesn't actually tell me. All it tells me is their recommended yarn is Vanna's Choice. But we live in the age of the internet. Yes, which means there's so much information available for us. Even discontinued yarn, you can still go on the internet and you can still find out information from its ball band. So I'm gonna head over here onto the Lion Brands website and I scroll down and I can see what the weight of the yarn is. And it's rated as a four medium, which is a worsted weighted yarn. Yarn Council of America, and you can find this online. I will have a link for it down in the description box. But they have a chart that lays out the different weights of yarn, and they've categorized them with a numbering system. So number four is considered a medium weight yarn. Medium weight yarns are worsted, Afghan, and Aran weight. So looking at this, we know Vanna's Choice is a worsted weighted yarn. So we need another worsted weighted yarn to substitute with. Easy peasy, right? Here's the thing about weights. Taking a closer look at the Craft Yarn Council's chart, you'll see that they define weights of yarn by the recommended gauge that you would get when working with the recommended needle size for that weight of yarn and you'll see that there's both a range of needles and a range of possible gauges. Not all worsted weighted yarns are exactly the same thickness. You have worsted weighted yarns that are a little lighter and you have ones that are a little heavier. Um, so looking at weight, is your jumping off point. That helps narrow the field down going, okay, I need to find a worsted weighted yarn, yay. But the next step is to compare the gauge that's on the ball band between the yarn that was recommended and the one you might end up choosing to do the project in. Now, there's a really important distinction right up front that we need to make when we're talking about yarn substitution and gauge. In the pattern, there is the pattern gauge. And right here in the pattern, it says the gauge is 16 stitches plus 24 rows equal about four inches using a size six needle. This is really important when it's time to do your gauge swatch and it's time to knit the pattern. But in yarn substitution, this is not what we need to be looking at when comparing yarns. 
we want to choose yarns that have similar characteristics. So we need to actually look at the gauge that is found on the ball band. So on the Vanna's Choice ball band, it says that its knit gauge is 16 stitches by 22 rows on a size 9 needle. So what we want is to find a yarn, a worsted weighted yarn, that has the same or at least very close to the same gauge. So we're working with Lion Brand. It might stand to reason that another synthetic Lion Brand yarn is going to have the same gauge if they're both worsted weight. Well, I happen to have, because I'm doing another, I have another video planned, I happen to have the Lion Brand Basic Stitch Premium Yarn. All right. And this yarn is also rated at a size four. So the gauge on this is 16 stitches by 22 rows over four inches. Great! It's the same gauge as, Vanna, as Vanna's Choice. I can totally use this. Ah. But look, when you're looking at gauges on a ball band, you don't just look at the gauge numbers. You also need to look at the recommended needle size. The recommended needle size for this, however, is a size eight needle. So Vanna's choice to achieve 16 stitches by 22 rows is done on a size nine needle. And on the Lion Brands basic stitch, it's done on a size eight needle. So the weight of the basic stitch yarn and the Vanna's choice yarn are very close, but they're not exactly the same. Now, it might be okay. You might go, but I like this yarn. It's affordable. I'm totally fine with acrylic. Um, I want to give it a go. I want to try this anyway. You're totally free to do that. And what you'd want to do moving forward, if you're like, mm, I think this is a strong candidate. I have it in my stash. I think I can make it work. What you would then need to do is do a gauge swatch of this yarn using the pattern gauge. And then look at it and say, okay, am I able to achieve this gauge in this pattern? And do I like the resulting fabric that came from that gauge? And if the answer is yes and yes, ding, 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 you have probably found a good yarn to substitute with. But, 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 if you're not happy with the gauge swatch, if you're like, no, that fabric isn't quite right, or you just can't hit, the same gauge as what's recommended in the pattern, your hunt continues. Here is another acrylic yarn. This is Big Twist. And uh, just looking at it, like let's just compare real quick. Look at these two yarns, right, side by side. I can already visually tell, but this is the basic twist, and this is the Big Twist yarn. And just visually, Looking at it, it already looks to me like Big Twist is just slightly thicker than the basic stitch. But let's look at the gauge and find out for sure because these are both worsted weighted yarns. So this gauge is 18 stitches by 24 rows on a size 8 needle. Now, this might be where it gets a little bit confusing <laughs> because you're like, wait, 18 stitches by 24 rows. That is more than what the Vanna's Choice was. The Vanna's Choice was 16 stitches by 22 rows on a size nine needle. But if I were to knit this yarn on a size nine needle and went up a needle size, I would probably, I would end up with fewer stitches per inch. And I'd probably get closer to 16 stitches per 22 rows on a size nine needle with big twist than I do obviously with this yarn. So this tells you that this is probably a closer weighted yarn to the Vanna's Choice than this one is. If there's one thing though I wish that ball bands had and that was included, it would be the wraps per inch. And the reason I say this is, what is wraps per inch? It is literally how many wraps of yarn that you do over an inch and that can tell you what the weight of the yarn is right here 
I have a wraps per inch tool and it comes with this little rod and it comes with this card that will tell you how many wraps per inch equal the various weights of yarn that you find. But I also want to just demonstrate this for you so that you can really see how different worsted weighted yarns actually aren't all the exact same weight and why you really have to look closely at um, the yarn gauge when comparing different yarns. This here is actually Vanna's Choice yarn that I have left over from a project I did a while ago. So I'm going to do, figure out the reps per inch. So there we go. There's my wraps. I'm going to count my wraps now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is ten wraps per inch. And I'm going to look here on this card that comes with the tool. And you can see nine wraps per inch is indeed a worsted weighted yarn. So here is the big twist. And I'm going to do the wraps per inch for this yarn. Okay, that's one inch. Now I'm going to count my wraps. Click one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is the same wraps per inch as the Vanna's Choice. So this, even though the ball bands for the Big Twist and the Vanna's Choice give a different gauge, they're the same wraps per inch, which tells me that, yeah, if I were to knit this on a size nine needle, I should get pretty much the same gauge as the Vanna's Choice. But you wouldn't know that if you don't look at the needle size. Now let's look at the wraps per inch on the basic stitch. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna count my wraps. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 wraps per inch. This is, this is two more wraps per inch. And let's look at that card again. 13 wraps per inch, according to this card, 13 wraps per inch is a DK weight. And Lion Brand is rating it at a number four. So honestly, if I were to use this on Vanna's Choice, I probably wouldn't be able to hit gauge very well because it's really, it is significantly different. And see, the ball band, it puts this at 16 stitches on a size eight needle, and the Vanna's Choice is 16 at a size nine needle, and look at the difference of the wraps per inch. This tells you that this is probably a closer weighted yarn to the Vanna's Choice than this one is. But this is where understanding the relationship between gauge and needle size is really important because it's recommended needle size is a size eight and it's saying you're going to get 18 stitches by 24 rows and if you only look at these two numbers you might overlook this yarn as a possible substitute for Vanna's choice. All yarn texture is, is really kind of the structure of the yarn. Some yarns have an even consistent twist. It's a plied yarn. It's round. Here again, this is the basic stitch from Lion Brand, um, but it's a round yarn. This is a plied yarn and it's consistent. So this is a very typical, typical, typical yarn structure that you find and it's the easiest to substitute because there's so many yarns on the market that are you know round but there are other textures there's thick thin there are tape yarns there are what are called cabled plied or crepe plied yarns and what that does is it takes like a two ply twisted yarn and it wraps a third ply around it and it creates this very interesting texture Texture can affect quite a few things when it comes to the nature of the fabric. 
it can affect the look of it, it can affect the drape of the fabric, and it can affect whether it's dense or tight or light and airy looking. So, and you can create very interesting effects with different textured yarns. Now, this can be a little tricky to do if you're not really familiar with yarn substitution and different textures of yarn. And a site that I'm going to recommend that you take a look at is actually yarnsub.com. Yarnsub.com can do a lot of the work for you that we're discussing today, but it's still good for you to really understand it for yourself and not have to rely on Yarnsub because Yarnsub is amazing. It is a fountain of information, but it doesn't have every single yarn available and you still need to be able to understand why you might pick one yarn over another. But if you go to yarnsub.com and you look up a yarn, it will tell you what the texture of the yarn is and it will give you other yarns that have that same texture. Um, or let's say that yarn that you're looking at isn't on Yarnsub. It happens. This is a discontinued yarn and it's not on Yarnsub, so I can't use Yarnsub easily to substitute this yarn. But, Information about this yarn is on websites that used to sell it, like webs. And so I can still get information about it from the internet, even though it's a discontinued yarn. And I can then use that information to find yarn substitutions. But this does demonstrate why it's important that you be able to suss out this information for yourself and not just rely on yarn sub because sometimes that shortcut, and that's what yarn sub is, it's a shortcut. Sometimes that shortcut is just not gonna be available for you. Substituting for fiber, can either be the most straightforward and easiest thing to substitute for when looking at different yarns, or it can be a complete rabbit hole and nightmare. It, it can go either way. And this is where understanding why you wanna do a yarn substitution really comes into play. Whether it's for budgetary reasons or ecological reasons, when you're substituting yarn, it's pretty easy if you're doing a one-to-one -one substitution. Acrylic is acrylic, right? You can use one acrylic yarn or you can use another acrylic yarn. You might, like, this is a 100% wool. You might decide, I want to use 100% merino wool. That's a fairly easy substitution to make because these are both sheep-based wools and merino will have slightly different characteristics. It's softer, it's a little thinner than characteristics from just a more um, basic bitch wool. Hey, Editing Carrie here. Look how far I got without having to do this. Anyway, I want to make clear that wool, in the U.S. at least, wool can either refer to the whole category of animal-based fibers, or it could be referring specifically to sheath wool, but whenever a yarn just says it's 100% wool. It's basically a sheep wool. But it's still a fairly straightforward substitution because if this is 100% wool and you go with a 100% merino wool, it's a pretty easy substitution to make. You have a cotton yarn, you want to use a different cotton yarn. You can totally do that. So single fiber yarns, substituting it with the same type of fiber at a different price point is a pretty easy substitution to do. Where doing yarn substitution and fiber can get tricky is either one, if you want to substitute, say, a wool yarn for a cotton yarn. One is animal-based, one is plant-based, they're very different fibers. And so substituting wool for cotton, it can be done, but it's not always easy to do and you really have to understand what you're getting yourself into. When you start getting into substituting yarns, wanting to do different fibers, that is a much bigger conversation than what I really have time for in this video. And that's a separate video that I will do later. Where yarn substitution can get tricky, however, when you are trying to get as close as possible to the recommended yarn in a pattern has to do when you're dealing with fiber blends. I'm going to pull out a classic knitting book. Ah! 
Stitch Bitch Nation. Oh my god. The Stitch and Bitch and Stitch and Bitch Nation launched knitting, I feel like, into the modern era. So many people got into knitting because of these books. By in here is a really pretty pattern that I've never done, but always have kind of wanted to. So this is London Calling, and the fiber, the yarn in this is called GGH Soft Kid. And Debbie Stoller was really cool because she actually included the fiber information in the pattern itself. It's really helpful when designers do that. This yarn was made up of 70% kid mohair, 25% nylon, 5% wool. Now, assuming that price is not the issue, and that's not why you're substituting your yarn, um, you just want a yarn that is most similar to the one that's recommended. When it comes to yarn blend, the thing not to get hung up on are the exact percentages. You want to just look at, does this yarn that I'm looking at buying have the same, generally, broadly, the same type of fiber in it as the recommended yarn? Are the percentages similar in the sense that it's made up mostly of the same fiber? Like the kid mohair is pretty much, that's the main fiber of this yarn and the one that's recommended. The next fiber in it are the same. Like you can read across and each one says kid mohair, nylon, wool. The exact percentages matching is not the most important thing. But let's say you wanted to do this project, but, but, the yarn is a little outside your budget. And you're like, I don't want to pin that, spend that much. Well, can you find a less expensive yarn that's going to mimic this picture? Well, let's look here at what is making this sweater special. The sweater has this very nice halo effect. One thing with wool-based yarns is after you've washed them, they bloom and you get a little bit of halo of yarn. And some animal fibers give off a really gorgeous halo. Like It's just like a little cloud of angel fur floating along with you. Cashmere does this, mohair does this, Angora does this. These are the qualities that make those fibers kind of special. Um, but they tend to be more expensive fibers. And they're more expensive fibers because they are more labor intensive to even collect those, yarn, those fibers from the animal. So can you get a yarn at a smaller price point and get this effect? Maybe. You might be able to find a yarn that's main fiber isn't mohair, but is instead wool, that just has a little bit of mohair in it and still get a little bit of that halo. It won't be exactly this, but you can get some of that effect from that substitution and get something that's still very satisfying. But you might look at all your options for kid mohair yarns and just sit there and be like, nothing I'm finding really hits the price point that I need and gives this quality of this yarn or isn't the right gauge. What do I do? Well, this is when we have to think about what's motivating us to substitute yarn and consider that either we have to look at yarns that maybe don't create the effect of the kid mohair and look at animal fibers that would be less expensive but still create a nice beautiful project. And that's a totally legitimate thing to do. You may not hit every single thing in the recommended yarn. That's okay. You may not be able to replicate exactly what you see in the photo of that pattern. That's okay. You have to decide what compromises you're willing to make in your yarn substitution in order to suit your motivations for doing the substitution in the first place doesn't mean you will not still have a beautiful product at the end that you're very proud of yourself for making. Not all yarns, even from the same manufacturer, will come in the exact same yardage. This is a very easy thing to do. It's a simple piece of math. Let's go back to our Vanna's, our original pattern that we were looking at. I need six balls of Heather, three balls of dark gray, and I know 
from the information I found on the internet. These came in at 170 yards per ball. So color A, I'm going to multiply 170 times 6. That will equal 1,020 yards of color A. And then 170 times 3 equals 510 yards of B. That's how many ball, that's the actual yardage that is being called for in this pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and go with big twist as my substitution for this. And this ball has 380 yards. This is a lot more yarn per ball right off the bat. We know this is probably gonna be a better deal money-wise. I need in color A, 1,020 yards. I'm gonna divide that by the yardage here, which is 380, that equals 2.68 balls. So um, I'm gonna buy at least three balls of Big Twist for color A, and I might actually go ahead and buy four. You don't wanna play yarn chicken. The best thing to do is to go ahead, round up if you get a partial ball, but go ahead and buy an extra ball of yarn. That ball of yarn can be your swatch ball. I'm a big proponent when you buy yarn for a project to buy a ball of yarn that in your mind is specifically for swatching. Because if you think of it as a swatch ball of yarn, you're not gonna be so hung up about, oh my God, I gotta swatch again, I'm wasting yarn. You're not wasting yarn because you bought that ball specifically to swatch with. Be aware that Despite all your best efforts, despite looking at all the factors that you need to consider when choosing a substitute yarn, that you can still end up making a choice that doesn't get you the results that you want. You can have misses. We've all been there. I've been there. Experienced knitters, master knitters, have misses with yarn substitutions. It's just the nature of the beast. When you have those misses, I really encourage you not to think of that miss as a mistake or a waste of time or a waste of resources. It's none of those things. All it is is a learning opportunity. It's a chance for you to go, okay, I thought that the stitch bitch, stitch bitch, it's basic stitch. I thought the basic stitch was close enough to the Vanna's choice and I was wrong. That happens. Now you know moving forward that you need to be more careful about checking that stitch gauge on the ball band and looking at the needle size and thinking out for yourself, okay, these are different needle sizes. The yarn that's recommended was done on a larger needle size. If I increase the needle size on the fiber that I'm looking at, I'm going to get fewer stitches per inch that's going to create a looser fabric. Is that the result that I want? Before you buy the yarn, you can, at, with experience, you will start to not even have to think about it that carefully. You will intuitively know it. But before you've gained that knowledge or that experience, you're gonna have to think through it a little bit. And that's okay. That is what is going to teach you how to be the boss of your own knitting. What do you think about yarn substitution? Is it something that you've jumped in before and you've had some mistakes? Or is it something you do all the time? You're like, of course, of course you yarn sub. Please comment down below. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have about it. Um, I think I'm gonna do another live stream on Sunday at 11. Um, because I think it would be a really great time if you watch this video you can join us on that live stream we're going to talk more about yarn substitution I can answer any questions that you have then as well and um, that could be a very fun conversation to have if you're interested in that live stream I will have a link down below um, where you can just sh share your email with me and I can send you an update on information about live stream. If you're like, I don't want any more email, thank you, Carrie, but no, that's fine too. Please follow me on social media, Instagram, Twitter. I'm very active on both. I will put up announcements on my Instagram about when my next live stream may be. And I have all my social media down below. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you've got some good knowledge out of it. Please give it a thumbs up and share it with your knitting friends. 
If you have not already, make sure that you hit subscribe and the notification bell, which will let you know whenever I upload a new video and when I'm doing a live stream. That's another way that you can know that a live stream is coming is by subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell. As always, I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this. And as always, happy knitting and happy health. Bye. So if you want to be the boss of your nose, can I say this suddenly? Okay. Do Most of us wear clothes that are made of acrylic, polyester, synthetic material. We don't necessarily go around judging each other or even thinking about, oh, that's a t-shirt from Target that's made with, you know, polyester. But that t-shirt, that teacher is all natural wool. T-shirt isn't made out of wool. What am I even saying? You know, no one person can know everything. I like to think I know everything, but I don't. I'm going to run out of time. Bye. <laughs> I timed that perfectly. <laughs> I did run out of time.